Hello and welcome to another Tabletop Ramblings Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game Battle Report. Today's battle pitches the might of the Army of Gothmog against the Riders of Theoden Legendary Legion. This is going to be a good one. At the head of the Riders of Theoden Legendary Legion is Theoden himself. And he has his armoured horse and a shield. And he has with him three Royal Guard, two that have throwing spears. And he's also got one rider with a throwing spear and one with no additional equipment. Following him to war, we have Gamling with the banner, Deowine and Aemer with throwing spear. And each of their warbands have two royal guard with throwing spear. Then finally, we have Dernhelm, the Eowyn and Merry profile. And she has with her four riders of Rohan. That's two with throwing spear and two with no additional war gear. That is 750 points of Rohan. Leading the forces of evil today is Gothmog, the lieutenant of Sauron, at the head of his army. He's bringing along his legendary legion and he is mounted on a warg and has a shield. He has with him seven Moranans with shield and seven with spear and shield, one of which has a banner as well. And then he's also got a troll with a drum. Accompanying Gothmog today is a shaman with three Moranans with shield and spear and three orcs with bow. There's also a captain, the pirate orc at the front there. He is a Moranan captain with shield and he has five Moranans with shield and five with spear and shield. And then this captain back here, again, is a Moranan or captain with shield. And he's got five Moranans with shield and five with spear and shield. And that is 750 points of the army of Gothmog. This is the table for today's battle. And the scenario is breakthrough. There are four objectives. There's one on either half of the centre. And then there's one for Rohan and one for Mordor up at the top. The victory points are weighted around these objectives with one victory point for having more models than enemy models on those central ones and two if you have only your models and no enemy models within three inches at the end of the game. You get one victory point for controlling your own objective and you get two if you have more models than enemy models in range of your opponents and four if you fully claim it. You also gain one victory point for wounding the enemy leader, two for killing them and one victory point for breaking the enemy. Victory points as always are counted up at the end of the game and this game ends at the end of a turn in which one force has been reduced to 25% or below. Deployment is anywhere up to the halfway mark, and as you can see, both forces have already deployed. The forces of evil have deployed in a very long line, with Gothmog and one of the captains forming a nice line in the centre, with the shaman behind, allowing his archers to go up the top and his spearmen to support where needed. Then across... This lone captain is holding this objective. But there's some terrain here that's blocked off, so hopefully even if they give way, it will take a while for Rohan to loop around. Rohan are attempting to do just that, putting Gamling and his banner and Deowine on this flank with all of their riders. And then in the center, a much smaller force than they're facing is Theoden, Deowine, and Aema and their respective forces facing down against the horde of Mordor. So with the board fully set up, let's roll for first turn priority. 
Rohan are going to be green, and Mordor will be evil in red. And first turn priority goes to Mordor. One of the very last moves of the evil turn, the Shaman is going to use two will to cast a Channeled Fury. Goes off on a three, and he's got it to go off there on a five. So now everyone within six inches is going to benefit from a Channeled Fury, making them impeccably brave, and also having that six up shielded save. End of Evil's movement. And they really didn't want priority here as they've not been able to advance too far without leaving the security of the terrain to bolster their line. So they've not gone up too far and they're just bracing for the charge, hoping that with all their might, some heroic moves will come off next turn and they'll be able to swamp the riders. They need to hold firm this turn and not take too many casualties. But now we're going to go into Rohan's move and see if they can break this line. The three trolls interrupt this video and their lunch to say please like, comment and subscribe. End of turn one movement. This is how the board is looking. Rohan have clashed all along the line with Mordor, getting some favourable fights as they moved second. And Aemer and a brave royal guard have charged the troll. There's still a couple of Rohirrim holding back close to the rear objective and ready for some counter charges if they lose the inevitable next turn heroic move roll off. Over on this flank, some riders are skirting round to try and attack the enemy from the rear while Gamling and Dernhelm and a couple of Royal Guard are trying to punch through the front. The fighting is going to be intense, but first there are some shots. Evil priority. So we start off with the three archers up at the top. They've not moved. They're hitting on fives. And they are going to go after this royal guard. Because this rider is just out of range. They're going to go for the royal guard. Oh, should have done these separately because that is all three hits. That's statistically unlikely from uh, from the five plus shoot value. So horse or rider, two hit the horse. Can they kill the horse on a five? Yes, the horse is dead. Can they kill the bloke on a six? Oh, not quite. But that rider is dead to the first volley of shooting. That is good work there from Mordor. We'll find him a dismount in a moment, but first he's going to take a shot back. He's going to avenge that horse. He is shooting at those archers. The orc archers obviously only have an 18 inch range with their bows, which is why that archer there is safe from return fire because he is about 19 inches away. So he does not hit because he has moved. That's unfortunate for the archer, but not the end of shooting. We come across and we have this archer here. He's going to shoot into those guys. He's moved, so he's hitting on fives. He misses. This guy's throwing spear into the same target. He's moved again, hitting on fives and misses. And this chap has also moved. He's hitting on fives with his throwing spear and misses. And then that archer up there moved his full ten, so he has no shots. So the... Three Orc Archers up at the top there have had a much more effective shoot phase than Rohan. We'll find him a dismount and then we'll come back for the combats. The only model for a Royal Guard that hasn't got a throwing spear that I've got is this Gambling model. So he's going to go down as the Fallen Royal Guard. And we'll just roll for his Throne Rider. He's fine there on a two. So he is... Battered and bruised, but perfectly fine. We'll come back into the combat phase. Right at the opening of turn one's combat phase, Theoden is screaming, DEATH! And allowing all heroes within the 12 inches of him to get a free heroic combat or strike. It's 
as it should be, not saving it for later, he's going to go straight in with that. So Aima is going to be using it for a strike, and the rest of the heroes are going to be using it for combats. And we'll start off with we'll start off with Theoden's combat. He's first into the fray, first to scream death. He is going for his heroic combat. He gets three on the charge, and he's just fighting against two. He wins that there nice and easy on the six. And he has double strikes against that one chap. And he is strength five, so he's wounding on fives. And he gets in there. Didn't even need his double strikes. He's killed him. And then he's just going to pop across to the guy next to him. We'll do the rest of the heroic combats first. We've then got... Deowine, so this is a heroic combat from the special rule Death, rather than his synergy with Theoden, where he gets a free one, but he has to join Theoden's combat. So this one he can do whatever he wants if he wins. And he's going after those two there. And he gets a five, although they are in range of a banner, so a six here. No. That's just a two, so he has one. Again, strength five on the charge, he needs fours, uh, five Sorry to wound. Nothing on the first set of attacks, although there was a four he could might, and he gets the six on the second set. Because they were obviously double strikes for knocking them prone. And he then gets to move on. He's going to go brave. He is going to charge into two, wanting to break the line quickly. We'll then come across to the combats over here and we'll do gambling first we'll do gambling against the two the bloke and his shield support and gambling has three attacks on the charge against those two and gambling wins there on the five again double strikes needing fives oh and he gets him on the first lot he goes down the Spearman choosing not to give way and forcing his fellow Orc to be trapped here, although everything's moved anyway, uh, because as he's not prone, that Orc would have been smashed up anyway, so giving way wouldn't have helped him. And it's good to maintain that line. Although now Gambling is crashing forward and he's going to go brave against the Captain and that Spearman. So let's hope that the rest of the riders can also be effective otherwise he might end up in trouble there we're going to then have another heroic combat the last one is Deowine and she is against two orcs again and she has smashed them up she actually I believe is three attacks so that's four on the charge so she actually has another dice she is a complete monster and she doesn't do it there because she's only strength four on the charge. She needs fives. And she's not done it. So she's going to spend a point of Mary's might. So he's now out of might to get the kill. Because she's within three inches of the banner though at the start of next turn, Mary will regenerate that might. So it's not the end of the world for her. And she continues her charge into that spearman and i think that is where we'll start we'll start off with her four attacks on that spearman he is going to shield oh the orc tried his best with the six but mary and eowyn are on a rampage they get sixes of their own and then it's five to wound and they kill him that is a dead orc We'll then do Gambling. Gambling there. Three on the charge. He's got the fight value. Fight five. And he gets the six. He's won that fight. And Lester Moranen has fight five. Oh, we'll just come back and check what their fight value is. In fact, we'll roll, we'll roll his dice and see if it makes a difference. So yes, he gets the six. We'll come back after we've checked his fight value. So a Moranen or captain is a lowly fight four. But so is Gambling. Gambling is only a fight for hero. So it is a draw. Both rolling sixes there. So it goes to a one, two or three to evil 
four, five, or six to good roll off. So this is going to be big for the right flank. And it goes to Evil. Evil have won the fight. Gambling there. Backs off. He's bitten off a bit more than he can chew there. And they are going after his horse. His horse is defence four. The Moran and Spearman there is strength four. So he is going to be needing fours to wound. And he's killed the horse. That is not good for Gambling. Gambling. Is he going to waste his fate on that? No, he could well die. So he's going to accept that his horse has died. And then these are strength five hits from the Moran and Captain going on to Gambling himself. No wounds there, although it would have killed his horse. So it was good not to waste his fate. We'll do his throne rider now. It is a four. So he's absolutely fine. We'll put his dismount down in a second. Put a dice next to him to remember that he has been dismounted. And in fact, we'll put a prone token on him. We'll, uh, we'll remember to dismount him after these combats. We'll then do this one here. It's two on two because the rider, the Royal Guard rather, has an extra dice for charging. Oh, and he's won. So now he has double strikes to try and break through. And he gets in there on the six. A five would have been enough with his impressive strength four on the charge. The army bonus effectively still applies in this list. They get plus one to their strength on the charge and plus one to their fight value on the charge if they are within 12 of Theoden. So the next fight, it's another one, the same two on two. Oh, and this time not so good. Now, he has been dismounted, but not knocked prone. So he gets a reroll from the banner, and it's a six. That is very, very lucky there for the Royal Guard. Can he kill? Yes, he can. That is another dead orc. They've done quite well on that right flank, although the odds were definitely stacked in their favour. Let's come across to the centre and the left. We'll just come along the line and do them as we come to them. So we then have a striking AMM. What does he strike up to? He strikes up to 10. That is good for AMA. Not so good for the troll. We'll roll AMA's dice. Oh, we only get to four high. What does his friend get? His friend also gets a four. So AMA there on the four. He could well have to spend a lot of might here if the troll can get a good roll. The troll gets a six. Ayama, he doesn't want to risk getting hurled. And actually, I think from some poor placement, that hurl would hit Theoden's horse as well. So he is going to have to spend two points of might to win the fight. That is not good work there from Ayama. If, uh, if you have a, a model that, uh, that is as useless as Ayama seems to be for me, let me know in the comments. Aymer never seems to perform, but uh, we shall see if he can wound. So strength four on defense seven troll from the rider. He is looking for sixes. No, can Aymer. Strength five. He's looking for fives, I believe. We'll double check once he's rolled. One wound there on the six. Aymer, just one wound for two points of might. That is not good at all. And that troll backs away. We then have Theoden charging in against two. He wins. Can he kill? Not on his first set of double strikes, but he does on the second. Another orc goes down. Aema not doing much, but Theoden really showing him what to do. We'll come across here to this one. It's a two on two. Oh, just. And is that banner in range? No, there's no way that banner's in range. Although we'll measure it anyway. You never know. And no, I don't think he is in. If he was, would it make a difference? Oh, yes. We'll come back once we've properly measured that. So we've properly measured it to the spearman. And it is just out. So that banner reroll isn't in. 
and the Royal Guard there has one on a three high. He has double strikes. He's going for five plus to kill and he gets the kill. This Orc is going to back away just to try and create a bit of a skirmish line so that if Rohan get priority, they won't be able to just charge everything in one go. We then have, uh, in fact, Daywine trying to charge multiple has not succeeded as this guy's in combat with them rather than this chap here. And so it is going to be a two on two again. Oh, this time evil win. They only need fives to bring him down. Can they do it? Yes. And the first... Royal Guard falls. They've lost a couple of horses, Rohan, but that is the first man to fall to Orcish Blades. We've then got here a two on on the charging Deowine, who then gets three and loses. Oh, quite badly. We'll do the banner reroll to see if they can get a six. So Deowine there. He is only against two. He's got enough fate to potentially keep his horse alive. But for one point of might, he is going to spend the might and he's going to win that fight. So that is a point of might off Daywine. And rolling to kill, he gets the kill. And that chap backs away. That's not good for Rohan, having to burn through so much might in the centre as the banner that gives might is all the way out on the flank. We then have this fight here. Again, it's a charging rider, so he gets plus one to wound against the two orcs. Uh, he doesn't get plus one to wound, he gets uh, plus, plus one dice to, uh, to try and win the fight, but it's not made a difference. He has lost. He's going down on fives, and he dies as well. That is not good. Many more Moranans have died than Rohan, but Rohan do not have the numbers to hemorrhage riders like this. This is a little bit more advantageous for them. For, uh, well, neither side really. Um, we then have this one here. That orc is just going to fight. And if I, he's going to stab, why not? Oh, and it pays off. He has won the fight. Rerolling ones for stabbing, needing fives. And he kills him. Stabs are always rewarded. Unless they're not. Two on the... Charging Royal Guard there. The front one will stab. Oh, this time not paying off. Does the stab kill him? No. But then can the rider, not on his first set. And not on his second. So he backs away and is knocked prone. And then that is the entirety of those combats. And having just panned out far enough to see the Shaman... We have remembered all of those different saves that should have been taken. So probably at least one of those shouldn't have died. Do uh, forgive me there for getting that shaman in the heat of the battle. But uh, hopefully we will remember next turn. End of turn one. This is how the board is looking. A great start for Rohan on the right, but everything faltered in the centre. And on the left, it was very unfortunate losing a lot of riders. Rohan in quite a precarious position already as we go into turn two priority. It goes to Rohan. Start of turn two and with good priority the pirate captain is calling a heroic move and Merry He's going to counter with the free point of might that he's just regenerated from being inspired by the banner. Over in the centre, Gothmog has called a heroic move and Theoden has countered. Gothmog's master of battle would have allowed him to get the heroic move for free, but unfortunately he had to call that first because he didn't have priority. So that's the heroic moves. We'll roll off to see who is going first. One, two, three, evil, four plus good. Oh, it's a two. So Gothmog is going to do his first and he's going to try and overwhelm the center, probably at the expense of the flank. 
but having the centre here is going to be very, very big as they will be able to make a break for the objectives. After Gothmog's heroic move, the entire Rohan line has been charged in the centre. Except for this chap here, the Orcs had to stay within six. The captain and friend are out of six, so they've foregone their movement for this turn. But here, everything has just been charged. Theoden, a definitely Deowine, and this chap here are surrounded. And then Aema and Chap are now char are facing that troll without their charge bonus. The heroic move there has definitely been effective. As long as these orcs can win some combats, they are going to start shredding some Rohirrim. Gothmog couldn't himself get into the combats due to all the orcs in the way, but that's not really a problem for Gothmog at this stage of the game. We'll then come across, and it is now Deowine's heroic move. Dernhelm, in fact, can Eowyn and Merry and Co. get some quick kills on this side and head over to the centre to help the beleaguered king. End of turn two move. This is how the board is looking. Here, some counter charges from Rohan. So these two try and pull orcs away from Theoden. And this chap here abandoned the objective to try and save Deowine. The dismounted Royal Guard has charged into two again to try and save Deowine. Over here, the riders have managed to loop around and have smashed into the Orcs from behind with everything here engaging in favourable fights for Rohan. The rider here just moved across deciding he would be better used in the centre. And finally... The Orc up here potted his way back casually to the home objective for the Orcs. That's how the table is looking. We've got the dice there just to remember that they charged. Everything over there charged, so we don't need to differentiate. And we'll go into the shooting. The evil shots are going to be these three here. There are no shots for good, so we'll go straight into evil, and it's those three. Firing into this combat. Oh, two hits. These orcs have been incredible. Six shots so far this game and five hits. Do they hit friend or foe? Ooh, one of each. So the orc, does he die? Nah, nine or one. And then horse or rider? It's the rider. Another six will kill him. Ooh, not quite. If that had been the other way around, then the uh, horse would have gone down if it was a Four than a six. Oh no, in fact it would have been the rider. But either way, no shots there hitting the mark. So we'll go into the combat phase. Start of the combat phase and there's a couple of heroics going off. There will be Eowyn calling a heroic with one of her points of might. Mary's one has obviously already been spent on that move. So this is one of Eowyn's. Gamling is going to call a heroic combat. It's a combat rather, not a move from uh, Eowyn. And then across, Aema is going to spend his last point of might. He is going to strike and try and fend off against that troll. That's all of the heroics. So we'll go straight in with the Eowyn, Merry, Dernhelm uh, heroic combat against the captain. Although actually... That one's fairly unlikely, so we'll go for Gambling and see if he can join them in that fight. So we'll start off with the Gambling Heroic Combat. He has two attacks against a Shielding Orc. He wins it there on double sixes. Can he wound? He needs fives to wound. Ah, oh, three and a one. Is it worth burning all that might? No, and that Orc backs away. We'll then do Dernhelm and Friend against the captain. Dernhelm is 5-5, five five, so she gets the 6, she's won, and she gets it, absolutely smashing him to the ground. We'll do 
The Riders attacks first. He is strength four on the charge against a defense seven. He needs sixes. Absolutely nothing there. So the first set of double strikes from Dernhelm needing needing sixes as well. Oh dear, because that Moranan or captain is defense seven. She is only fight at strength three base. Oh, but she's got two there. And her double strikes. Can she do it? Yes! Three, six in the... And the captain is killed outright. No chance to use his fate. He is dead. So then moving on, the rider and Eowyn. That was a brutal heroic combat. And again, we'll stick with Eowyn and co on the right hand side. Eowyn against that shielding chap there. She wins with the six. Can she kill him? Yes, she is an absolute monster. Although not obviously to forget Merry and his little strength two sword strikes helping out. We then have the two Rohir in there. So that's four attacks against, again, he's gonna shield. Oh, and win, unless the banner re-roll. Two of five, they win it on the draw. They have the fight value there. So these are double strikes, wounding on fives, and the first lot get the kill. Another orc falls here. We then have this, it's a one on one. And the orc is gonna shield. The orcs now just need to slow them down on this flank. He did his best there with a six. But the Royal Guard wins the draw with his fine value. Double strikes, but doesn't wound. So we'll back him off. We'll just knock him prone so that we remember. And then we have here another charging Rohirrim against an Orc. That Orc again is going to shield. Oh, and win the fight. Pushing that Archer Rider back. And then again... Another shielding orc who draws the fight unless he is within 12 of Theoden. It's very unlikely. No chance. He is not within 12. So it's a draw. It's one, two or three to evil. But on the five, it does go to Rohan. And he gets double strikes. Needing fives. Smashes him to pieces. He is dead that has been a very successful set of combats on that flank but now we're going to head across to the center where things are looking a lot more bleak for Rohan so coming across we are going to start off with these ones at the back to try and pull models away from the trapped heroes and royal guard it's Rohan's priority so that's of the best move for Rohan and we'll do this one first the orc is going to shield because he wants to remain where he is to trap Theoden. Oh, it's a draw, but the Royal Guard has the fight value. We'll use these charge markers. We're here now, we'll remember. He has charged and absolutely slaughters that orc. That gives Theoden an escape route, and that is important now for these fights. We'll do this one, though. It's... Charging against, again, shielding, because if he stays alive, that orc will keep him trapped. Oh, too many red dice there. It's two on two. A draw, but charging within 12 of Theoden. The rider gets plus one fight value as well as his plus one strength. So he is fight four and beats the orc. Doesn't get him on the first set of doubles, but he does on the second. And that orc is dead. Another orc killed here to try and give the beleaguered Rohirrim in the center some room to breathe. We'll then do this fight here. And this royal guard is going to shield so that at least they'll back away and make a little bit of space there. It's going to shield the two orcs. Oh, are they going to bother shielding themselves? No, they're not going to bother because they want kills. Oh, and it pays off for them. Wounding on fives. Oh, dear. Nothing there. And they don't get the re-rolling one. 
So that is him backed away. And then we have here just a one on one. He isn't going to bother shielding. He is going to stab because if he dies, it doesn't affect that fight. And he might get a lucky kill. Oh, stabbing there. He has won the fight. Rerolling ones now needing fives. Oh, it is a four. So he has not got the kill. In fact, having just quickly double checked, that four is enough to wound because Gothmog gives everyone within 12 inches of him, all the orcs anyway, hatred man, which is plus one to wound. So that royal guard goes down. That is brutal. That's part of the legendary legion buff. It increases it from three inches to 12. So with that royal guard dead, we then come on to these fights here. We'll start off with Aema. He strikes. What does he strike? <laughs> Only a six. This could be the uh, the end for Aema here. As with no might, there's no need to differentiate. It's three of his attacks and one from his friend. They get a six, but the troll has the fight value. Oh, very lucky, but the troll is in banner range. If it's a six, no. So Aema there and friend get to make strikes on the troll. We'll do the friend first. He is going to be needing sixes. Nothing. And then it's also sixes from Aema because not on the charge. He's only strength four. Nothing at all there. Absolutely abysmal. And the troll backs away unharmed. We'll then do this fight here, which is, we're gonna put three on Theoden. It's risky, but it would be nice to keep him alive. Theoden, he does have some might. If he rolls high, it'll be all right. Ooh, that's not so good. He is gonna spend a point of might to win the fight. He's taken one for the team there. But at least he has done what he needed and he's won the fight. So he's spent a point of might. He needs fives on both of those. Can he do it? No. So they back away unharmed. But Theoden and his horse are still alive. We'll then do this one here. It's two and a banner against the Royal Guard. So the banner will be the purple dice. And then... Standard red for the orcs. Oh, so the banner gets the five, but it's down to a four. So it's currently a draw. So banner reroll for the orcs. And the fight value clutches it there for the royal guard. Royal guard wins. In fact, he only has one strike. We've given him two, haven't we, to win the fight? We'll just reroll his. What did he get? Ah, he won it on a five. So the royal guard, they're making strikes. And they back away, wiping out the banner as well. So used to Rohan having the charge bonus, but in that one, he was charged himself. We then have here a rather nasty fight. It is Deowine against a horde of orcs. If he doesn't get a high roll here, he is stuffed. He's looking for the six or it's all over. Oh, a five. He could do this now. So he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight orcs against him. We'll just roll four and then we roll them. So nothing there. They get the six. So Deowine there is going to have to spend another point of might, leaving him with just one left to win that fight. And these orcs all back away. And he's going to make some strikes. And he is going to strike at the chaps here at the back. He needs fives to wound, but does nothing. Might spent there for nothing for both Theoden and Deowine. Although still alive and on their horses, at least that is worth something. End of turn two. This is how the board is looking. The centre is a big maelstrom of carnage with orcs all over the Rohirrim and about to cut them to bits. And here the orcs have fallen 
to the Rohan charge. So at this point, it is a very open game and it is going to rest on the next few crucial turns. Let's go into turn three, priority. And it goes to Rohan. That is a very, very good result there for Rohan. Start of turn three. And again, Rohan priority. So Gothmog is calling a heroic move. And with his last point of might, Deowine is countering. Over here, with again, Rohan priority, there's no need for any heroics. But Merry is going to recharge his lowly point of might. In fact, no, Eowyn is going to recharge hers and take her up to two, leaving Merry with zero. Strike that. It is Merry that recharges because it has to be someone that has fully run out of mites can then regenerate one, which is why Dernhel Nair is so useful because Merry spends just one to run out and then he can keep getting them from the banner. So it's Merry that is now back up to a mite. Eowyn has spent one. The heroic move roll off then between Gothmog and Deowine. Oh, and on the three, it goes to Gothmog again. After that horrendous heroic move, the orcs have tied up the Rhea Rohirrim that came into the rescue last time and have managed to engage along the line. They've not been able to get quite as many traps, although here it is looking unpleasant there for Deowine. Let's come back after Rohan's move and the rest of the Gothmog Legion move. End of the movement phase for turn three, and this is how we're looking. Over on the right-hand side, the Orcs are pretty much finished off. These two charged, and this chap charged the prone Orc. Here, Dernhelm and two have come up round the rear to challenge the important enemy objective and try and come around the back of this mob here and help out the beleaguered Rohan centre. This one rider managed to counter-charge although it could be too little too late. And here, Gambling ran around to at least lend his banner to these fights here. And hopefully if Aema can survive, then he'll be able to regenerate some might as well. We have seen already how beleaguered the centre is. And then up here on the left, the Orc Captain and his spearmen are just forming up against any potential charge and they're holding that objective going into the shoot phase we have throwing spears from the raw guard and dernhelm dernhelm will be the blue one and the green will be the royal guard and they're just lobbing into him the throw from dernhelm does hit on the five needing a six to kill no, it's just a one. It thuds into the tabletop rambling shield there and he is absolutely fine. The orcs are going to turn their attention to these riders and they're going to shoot every shot into Dernhelm. Can they keep their streak up? Oh, they're starting to get tired. Only one hit this time. Horse or rider. It hits the horse, needing a five. No, the horse shrugs it off and they continue their charge. That's the end of shooting. Now it is the combat phase. Start of the fight phase and Gothmog is declaring a heroic combat with his last point of might. And he's also declaring that the time of the orc has come, which gives all orcs battlefield wide re-roll to wound. This is his make or break turn. So it's Gothmog's heroic combat, and we'll roll Deowine. Can he get a six? No, he's not even putting the pressure on. Roll Gothmog's three attacks. He gets a four, so he's got the draw, and he gets it on the banner, just to save finding all of those dice. We'll then roll Gothmog's attacks. 
Ooh, if we can find some dice and we'll come back. So we've gathered up the dice and there are nine orcs in this fight. We'll roll them first. Nine orcs, wounding on fives, re-rolling failed wounds against a trapped target. This is nasty. So needing fives to wound, that is two wounds. Re-rolling them all. And this is before Gothmog even gets a look in. Yeah, he is very, very dead. We'll come back once Gothmog and those directly engaged in the fight, so not the spear supports, have moved. After that heroic move, a bunch of orcs have just joined into these fights to get the weight of numbers, and Gothmog has legged it up to charge into that rider there. And we'll start off with Gothmog's fight. He wins it there on the draw. And then he is wounding on fours, re-rolling failed wounds. He absolutely slaughters that rider. He'd have had to back away to allow space and that is Gothmog's brutal charge he's late to join the combat this game but he's made a big difference when he's finally got stuck in we'll then come down to this fight here it's good priority so we will we'll just go along the line we'll do the troll against him the Troll, ooh, draws the fight but wins on fight. So re-rolling for the banner. Good, have won. The troll's in range of a banner though. Ooh, nearly so. Making strikes, the rider. No, doesn't wound the troll but does push the troll back. That is very, very handy there because the troll could well have barged onto Aima or hurled him or done any number of nasty things. So that is good news there for Rohan. We'll do Aema next. Aema against a stabbing orc. Because the orc's bonuses, he wants to make use of those. If he flukes it, he loses and he would have lost anyway. There we go. He has lost and dies. An orc goes down there to Aema. Although they're not really the fights that the orcs were ever thinking they'd win. Here we have... Three, because he's charged against one. That orc isn't daft enough to try and win it with uh, brute force. And he is going to shield. He loses. And then the charging Rohirrim needing fives gets the kill there. And that is another orc down. But then we come to some fights not... Quite as in favour for Rohan as these have been. We'll do here the king against two. Front guy stabbing. Oh, nearly. We're going to have the banner re-roll for evil. Oh, and on a two high, Theoden wins the fight. That was an opportunity missed there for the forces of evil to stab into the king of Rohan. Instead, Theoden makes his strikes. He doesn't get the kill but pushes them back. That was a lucky save there. We'll part them in a moment. They're a little bit stuck. We'll come down to these fights here. We have four on one. The rider there didn't charge. So he's in a little bit of trouble now if he loses this. Oh, which he does. These now are re-rolling failed wounds and wounding on fours. Yeah, he is slaughtered. Another rider down. This Royal Guard then against five. The Royal Guard didn't charge, so he needs a six on this one dice. He loses it. The Orcs, sensing that their time has come, are going to make five strikes against him, needing, oh, needing fours. And they don't get it. Oh, but they have that re-roll. That is five that fail to get the four plus. Will it happen again? Will he survive? No. 
Time of the Orc has come there, gets the kill. And another Rohirrim falls. That has been a nasty set of fights. But there are still more to come. We've got two on one. The Royal Guard is going to shield. This is not a turn for the men of Rohan to be brave. He's won. So he pushes those Orcs back. Oh dear. He's fallen over in the process. We'll then come across to the shielding Orc here because he's prone. He might as well shield. He wins. Wow, with two sixes, he has won. He stands and he's pushed that Rohirrim back. And then we have this chap here. And he is also going to shield. He's He's got all those bonuses to wound, but it's just not worth it. He needs to try and survive and hold that objective. He, he did his best there on a four but it's not enough to win the fight with the Royal Guard in the fight. So these are the first set of double strikes for one of them and gets the kill. That lonely orc on that objective is now in a lot of trouble. End of turn three and already things are well on their way. This is a very quick and bloody game. The centre is in tatters. But the right flank has been held there by Rohan. Anyone's game. Let's go into turn four. It goes to Evil. Start of turn four move with Evil priority. Gambling is calling a heroic move. He'll get all of these guys in the bubble, which is all that really matters. Sorry to say for this chap here. So that is going to go off because Gothmog has... Fled up there and is out of a range of doing anything meaningful with a counter. And then up here, the forces of good are not going to call a heroic move because Gothmog with his Master of Battle will be able to copy it for free. So it is evil to move first up here. So the only heroic move then is gambling. We'll come back after that movement. The heroic move has been quite useful there for Gambling. He wasn't able to get in anywhere, so he has just run to the centre. But everyone has been able to charge. And this rider managed to take out an orc who was there with a throwing spear. At the start of the turn, we should mention that uh, Gambling was in three inches of Aema. And Aema regenerated a point of might for being close to the banner. Because he'd previously run out. So he now has one point of might. And we'll be able to strike. We'll come back after Evil have done their move. And then if there's any Rohirrim left, they will move as well. This is how we're looking at the end of turn four movement. The Orcs have countercharged as much as they could. Getting around a little bit and fully trapping this poor chap on foot. They've stayed on this objective. And here, Gothmog has gone after the easier target. And that orc there has left the objective to charge and tie down Dernhelm. Over here, this poor lonely orc charged these two to turn off their charge bonuses, but was countercharged by the last Rohirrim. There was nothing he could do to stop that from happening. That's how the board is looking. There is some shooting. The five orc archers are going to shoot into Dernhelm's combat. Can they take her off her horse? Can they hit? Oh, two hit. Friend or foe? They both hit the orc. Oh dear. Do they kill the orc on sixes? Yes! They've killed the orc there. That at least has stopped any heroic combat shenanigans there from Dernhelm. The archers have been lethal to both friend and foe. Start of the combat phase and Aema is going to call a heroic strike with his regenerated point of might. He strikes up to 10. Oh, in fact, no, fight 9, but more than enough to beat the troll. So it's 3 attacks on 3. We'll start off there. In fact, it's 4 attacks because the troll is infantry. So he'll get his bonus attack on the charge, but not the knockdown because of the troll strength. Oh dear, but the troll has beaten him. He's got the banner re-roll. 
He needs this to be at least a five. Oh, Ayama, no. Ayama has lost the fight there. That is not good at all, especially as Theoden is in a vulnerable position. So actually, that troll is going to barge. Ayama has not only fluffed killing the troll, that only has two wounds left, but he's actually potentially got his king killed. Ayama will go back three inches. How far will the troll move? The troll can also move three, which is more than enough to get in on Theoden. So we'll move Ayama back three. In fact, we can move him back through the banner and force the banner back as well to keep the banner away from Theoden's fight, allowing the troll to come in and trap Theoden. That is not good now for Theoden. That could be the end of the king. We'll do that fight. Uh, we'll do that fight at last. We'll save the best till last. We'll uh, come back later to that one. We'll start off with this one here. It is three and the Shaman Spear Support against the Charging Fella there. The Shaman doesn't have any might, but we'll give him a different dice anyway. He is, oh, that's a bit confusing. He is the uh, the purple dice. Oh, and the Rider. Wow, that is straight sixes all across the board. Seven sixes there. That is absolutely incredible. And the fight value of the Royal Guard wins that. So he's going after those two. He doesn't kill the first chap. And he doesn't kill the second chap. So they just back away prone. And so does that guy. And he gives way. That was an amazing set of sixes there, followed by some fairly pants rolling to wound. Let's put pro markers on them. And then Go to the next combat. This one here, it is two on to that chap there. He has charged, so he stands a chance. And he wins. More sixes. Incredible work winning these fights here. So he's going after him first. And he kills him with double sixes. What is going on with these dice? That is incredible. This chap here, two more double sixes. Oh no, not quite. He backs away and is knocked prone. We'll pop that on him. Surprisingly difficult to do through a camera. There we go. And then we've got here a three on one. Three on that charging rider of Rohan. Can Rohan get more sixes? Oh no, so close, but so far away. Sixes for evil. They are ooh, possibly not within range. So we'll say fives to wound. We'll check it if it's relevant. No, not relevant. He is killed by the orcs. They are on a rampage at the moment. Here we have the four against trapped chap on his foot. So he is going to shield and loses the fight. That is more orcs rolling to wound here. Just needing fours, uh, fives in fact to wound because Gothmog is miles away. Nothing on the first set. Will they get it on the second? Yes. So they back away because they've trapped their opponent and he is dead. And that could be a broken Rohan now. We'll do Gothmog's fight up here. It's Gothmog against one. Gothmog wins there, beating that one nice and easily. And he's wounding on fours with Hatred Men. Smashes him to pieces. That is good work there from the Lieutenant of Sauron. Can his lackey do the same thing? This is a chap who's charged and two against a shielding orc. No, that shielding orc could now be uh, getting squished as there's going to be a lot of attacks. We'll do all of this rider first. He gets double strikes with his plus one 
on the charge is four, needing fives. And he has killed him. We'll back these away because they trapped their opponent. And he is dead. They've now secured that objective on the right. And that is probably the best that can be said for Rohan as it is looking very messy now. Both forces very close to the break point. Last but by no means least though, let's not forget Theoden against the Troll and Co. This is going to be a very, very important fight for Theoden to win. He's plus one on the charge because the troll is still infantry. Oh, he's got a five. It could be worse, but he's not got the fight value in this fight. Nor. Oh, we find no, he has got a point of might, so we can get the six. So we have these three orcs. No. Banner. No. And then the troll. Needs to get a five high here to win. A six to win outright and stop the might from Theoden doing its thing. Oh, cocked. Will it be a six? No, so it's a five. They have won on the draw. Theoden will use his last point of might. He's won. He's pushed these back and knocked the front ones prone. We'll put prone markers on them in a second. The troll obviously is absolutely fine. Theoden is actually going to make his strikes on the troll. He's going to try and bring it down. He's strength five on the charge. He needs two five pluses. Oh, one. He's wounded the troll. The troll backs away wounded. They've not moved very far, have they? Backs away wounded. It's now got one wound. That was a good, good comeback there from Theoden from a very sticky situation. The board at the end of turn four, it is carnage. The centre is a swirling maelstrom of chaos and the left now in orcish hands and the right in Rohan's hands. This is going to be very, very close. Rohan have now broken and Mordor are not far off. Let's roll for turn five priority. It's a draw. So this time it swings back to Rohan. At the start of the turn, the banner has given Aema a point of might. With an incredible stroke of luck, Aema has passed his courage test to stay. He's passed his courage test to charge. He's thrown a spear and hit the troll and rolled a five to wound. So that free point of might that he's regained is going to be spent on turning that five into a six and with a throwing spear the troll is dead allowing Aema now to continue his charge and plow up the center that is the best five points on a throwing spear that has ever been spent throwing spear central this turn as Dernhelm has thrown her spear into Gothmog and hit the warg on that four to wound Again, she is using a point of might. It's her last point and Mary's out as well. But that is massive. Gothmog now off his mount and she is going to charge his now foot model. So he dismounts and she is able to charge. We'll roll for Throne Rider. It's a four. So he's absolutely fine. But crucially... He won't be able to make strikes if he wins. That is an unbelievable volley of throwing spears. When this game they've done very, very little. They have definitely paid for themselves with those two throws. We'll come back after the rest of the move. End of turn five movement. Things are getting tense now. The orcs have come round and trapped and spear supported as many fights as they can down here. They are starting to hold this objective now. Rohan just trying to stem the tide and to make a break up for the enemy's objective. The captain has run off the objective instead of staying there as was the plan using his, uh, his courage and might and everything to try and stay on that objective. If 
evil break now, he could well run, but his might is going to be instrumental here in taking these guys out. Gothmog, as we've seen, has been charged and he is off his walk. This rider has come to help. One of the riders, however, got snake eyes for his courage and ran, which means this Royal Guard is staying there, hiding away from the fight to keep that objective for the end of the game. And he is bodyguarded to Thaden, so as long as Thaden is alive, he will automatically pass his courage. This is how the board is looking then, as we go into the shoot phase. And we've got these three archers shooting into the archer behind the combat. They're elevated enough to be able to see, but they all miss there. Too worried about hitting Gothmog. Combats, we'll start off down here. We have a two on one. Now, the chap there is prone, but the spearman will be able to make strikes. So they really want to win this. Oh, and they do. There is the banner. No, they've won that. So the prone guy stands and the spearman can make strikes. So he backs away. But he's going down on fives. No, he lives and he's trying valiantly to hold this bottom objective, the Rohan deployment area objective. We then have a charging Royal Guard against three. And the front two will stab. Oh, they lose there. So the front two who stabbed don't hurt themselves, but they do take strike. Strength four on the charge, fives to wound. Nothing and cocked. Oh, a kill. So that spearman goes down. He backs away and he is knocked prone. That's holding the objective there. The gamble paying off a little bit there with Aemer running off and not holding the objective. We then come to this fight here. That is a trapped gambling. It's meant to be trapped. He must have been slightly knocked. Trapped Gambling against four. Gambling doesn't have a shield, which is unfortunate, although fitting as he's got a ginormous flag. So it's four on two. Oh, he has not won that fight. He's got the banner. No, he is going to have to use his last point of might to, that was quite fortunate, to turn those fives into sixes, or at least one of them, uh, into a six. And he has won the fight. So he's going to make double strikes against the chap that's prone. Doesn't kill him, so we'll go after him again. And he does kill him this time. That guy is dead. In fact, he was double prone. And now he is double dead. So they back away. And Gambling survives that trap. We then have Theoden in a little bit of trouble there. Two of them are prone, but three are not. So his charge there absolutely fluffing it there that is not good at all we've got the banner and four one of which is the shaman and they smash it with sixes if he's in range of a banner it still makes no difference this is not good for theoden king so this chap stands as does this chap but they won't be making strikes they back away because they've trapped their target. And now those that weren't prone can make strikes, which is the Shaman and the two Orcs. So the Moranans first, they are striking at Theoden. They have Hatred Man, so they are wounding on fives. And there's one wound on Theoden. And then the Shaman will roll his strikes then we'll check if he's strength three or four. Oh, and that is two wounds. Unbelievable. Theoden is dead. He's only got one fate. So those two sixes from the Shaman, unbelievable. Theoden is dead. That was an unexpected result there. That is not good for Rohan. Can they... Uh, can they turn it around here? They've got two here against Aemer's charging four. He is grief-stricken, enraged. He wins the fight. 
Oh dear. And does he smash him to bits? Not on the first lot, not with a three high, but he does there. He gets him. And that is at least an orc down and probably then the orcs broken, but Theoden dead. That is a blow. Final combat though is a little bit more in Rohan's favour. It is Gothmog against Dernhelm. Gothmog, three attacks, although he is going to shield. So that will give him six against Dernhelm's four on the charge. They both fight five. Oh, and it goes to Gothmog. She is pushed back. Gothmog absolutely fine because he fell off his warg and didn't get the magic six on the throne rider table He wasn't able to make strikes. That's why he shielded that and the fact that they didn't want to get turned into a little pulp on the floor under her hooves So that is the end of the turn another very very big turn The forces of Rohan now nearly quartered both forces broken that is absolutely brutal, brutal fighting there as we go into turn six priority. And it's Rohan's priority. So without needing to think for a second, this captain is calling a heroic move, which will be countered by gambling. We'll do that roll off now. And it goes to evil. We'll come back after that move. The heroic move then for the captain, we're not going to roll his courage because the shaman's fury is up giving everyone auto pass courage tests within six inches. We've forgotten every single time to use the fury save, but at least we've remembered that. So we'll come back without any courage tests within six inches of him and we'll do that heroic move. At the end of turn six move, this is how we're looking. The orcs have dogpiled onto everything here, keeping the shaman in the center so that no orcs failed courage tests. Everything is just trapping and trying to get some last minute kills. The objective here is looking very precarious now for Rohan. Up here, Dernhelm passed her courage test with flying colours and charged Gothmog. Her courage test allowed this rider to run off onto the objective. But over here, this royal guard, having seen through the trees his liege slaughtered, he has fled on a four. And then coming across, this orc on a six fled as well, leaving both of the side objectives unclaimed so it is going to come down to the two home bases amazingly these five uh, these three orcs all passed they are the little ninja sharpshooters and they have all passed their courage knowing full well that horses can't climb stairs they're like daleks so this chap moved to try and shoot out this rider from the objective and we'll go straight into those shots as there are no good shots all evil so the chap that moved is the bigger dice needing sixes fives from the rest oh that was nearly a full set that is impressive shooting once again horse or rider one on the horse doesn't kill but the important one is this one on the rider these guys are incredible. Can they kill him? Needing a six. Oh, it's a one. He remains on the objective. And those archers not quite able to kill him. Combats. We'll start off with Aemer against three guys. It's three on three. Oh, and Aemer has absolutely bottled it. This could be the end for him. Gothmog is easily within 12 of them, so they have Hatred Man, meaning that they are wounding on fives. They have double strikes because Aemer is trapped. Ooh, and they put four wounds on Aemer. He'll roll all of his fates. 
and not save a single wound. Ayama goes down and that was starting with the uh, the best combat for Rohan as well. That does not bode well. Ayama is dead. That is a blow for Rohan. As we come now to the Captain and Co against Gambling. So we'll do the uh, the standard orcs and the banner against Gambling first and then we'll roll for the captain in a second. Oh, Gambling has won it. We'll do the captain. He's got banner re-roll. No, Gambling's won. That, oh dear me, snapped off his spear. Being a bit heavy handed there. Uh, his pick in fact, not the spear. And now we're wrecking everything. Gambling has forced the orcs back. Move him a bit further. And he is going to make strikes. And he's going to go after the two spearmen that were in combat with him. And he doesn't kill either. But that is not the end of the world there. He is still alive. And that is very, very big. As we come to this fight here, it's two on one. And they've won on... The Rohirrim has won on fight value. He's going to go after... Well, this chap will be able to back closest to the objective. So he's going to go after him. But he doesn't kill. He is still fine. And then this one here, three on one. That Royal Guard needs to win if they are going to hold that objective. He does not win there. He has definitely, definitely lost that. Their strength four on defence six. They're wounding him on fives. Double strikes for him being trapped. But they don't kill him. They back away. They've still probably claimed this objective. But that is good there for Rohan. They may have lost Aemer, but they're still in the fight on that objective. We then come to the big final fight. It is the leader of the Orc Force Gothmog against the only surviving relative of Theoden. She is going to go for blood. And Gothmog's going to shield. Oh, and it goes to Gothmog there on the six. Gothmog played it safe, pushes her back. Not wanting to give up any of the VPs for getting himself wounded. Especially when Theoden has fallen. That is the end of the turn. And with just four Rohirrim left, five in fact, it is also the end of the game as they have been 25 percented. It's only the end of turn six and already one force has been quartered. It is the end of the game. Rohan have been slaughtered. Though the Orcs have also taken a massive, massive beating. Let's count up the victory points. Neither side have models within three inches of their own objective and no enemy models so neither point get neither side get the points for that neither side have either of the flanks as they fled in the final turn and both sides are attacking the enemy objective so here rohan have managed to keep something alive near their own objective giving the Orcs just two victory points for having more enemy, uh, more friendly models, but still an enemy within three inches. So they get two, and Rohan amazingly get four for the chap up there who survived the Hail of Arrows. He gets four victory points. So it is four to two so far. Both sides get a point for breaking the enemy. That's five, three, and then Theoden fell giving two points to evil. And with Gothmog unharmed, despite getting kicked around by Eowyn and Merry, he has not lost any VPs, so it is a 5-5 five, five draw. A very, very close game, and the score definitely mirrors that. In the madness of war, there can be no winners. Both sides suffering humongous losses. Both Gothmog and Theoden have only been able to secure a draw. 
Although Theoden paying for that with his life has probably lost the moral victory. MVPs of the battle has got to be Dernhelm, the Eowyn and Merry profile that has just absolutely cut through swathes of orcs. She and Merry have managed to cut through the right flank, securing that, although ultimately the courage of men failed. And then she has gone round, she nearly killed Gothmog, she secured that top objective, securing the draw. And for evil, it has got to be Gothmog himself. The Legion special rules obviously don't work without him. He is uh, he's central to it. He has just been massive, giving them that plus one to wound when he called that shout and also giving the re-rollable wounds. He's just generally been amazing for his buffs. It did slightly go away when he legged it up to the back to try and hold the rear objective. That was possibly an oversight from the Master General. And we should obviously honourably mention the three archers there who were all incredibly brave and who shot up a good couple of horses there. So I hope you enjoyed this battle report. It was incredible fun to play. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.